everyone, this is Joe Workman, and today I am excited to talk about PageSafe. PageSafe provides us a very simple and easy and yet very secure way to password protect our web pages. Now, a lot of other solutions out there are full-blown username and password management systems, and that's really not what we need 90% of the time. All we need is a simple password or PIN to unlock our web pages. And PageSafe does exactly that. So here we have the default look and feel for a PageSafe locked page. When you go to the web page, you are presented with the login screen. And you'll see that we have here we have the four digit pin. And let's go ahead and enter in the incorrect number. So what we'll notice is that PageSafe give, gave us an error saying that, hey, that didn't work, please try again. And let's go ahead and enter in the correct number. And we'll notice that when I enter in the correct number, we'll get a nice unlock animation and then our web page will be unveiled beneath it. Now PageSafe allows you a lot of customization for the lock screen. As you see here, we actually have a padlock and we have three different padlocks that you can choose from and the padlocks animate as well. So when you log in, you'll notice that the accent color turns green and then the padlock actually unlocks. Now PageSafe also shapes with a logout button and you can actually use this logout button with any button stack that you want or just a simple text link to actually log out of the page. And whenever you click that logout button, you'll basically the page will be locked immediately and the user will be prompted for the password again. Now, if you don't want the padlock or the key and you'd like to maybe to have a custom company logo, we also provide that as well. And here's an example that we have actually, instead of a four digit pin, we're using the passcode. So a text password. And another thing you'll notice on this page is that we actually have a nice, beautiful background cover image, as well as a, a nice styled kind of form uh, layout here. Now, those are just a few of the design options that you can actually do with PageSafe. There are a lot of settings to allow you to really make that lock screen really beautiful and shine. Now, a concern about security. PageSafe does not allow any content whatsoever from your actual web page that it locks. It doesn't allow any of that content to come down to the browser until the user has properly authenticated the stack. So if you were to even look at the page source, none of the code except for the page safe lock screen has been downloaded to the browser until the user actually enters in the correct password or pin code. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you can actually use page safe to lock one or multiple pages with the same login. So if you want to have multiple pages with different passwords, um, you can do that very easily. If you want to unlock multiple web pages with the same password, you can do that as well. And what I mean is you can actually log into one page and unlocks all of them. Or you can have a, you know, this set of pages is maybe for the admin and this set of pages is for somebody else, right? So you can actually kind of divvy up the web pages if you want to kind of give different access to different people and just give them the password that they want. Now, PageSafe isn't meant to be a full-blown user management system, right? It's not for managing username and passwords and granting access levels and stuff like that. It is a simple solution that handles 80 to 90% of the use cases that most people are going to need. They need to password protect a web page, and they need to password protect it with just a simple pin or password. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and dive in to see some of the settings that PageSafe provides us. So here is the PageSafe demo project. And this demo project ships with PageSafe, as well as it's always available for download from our documentation portal. So if you wanna password protect a page, all you need to do is add the PageSafe stack to the top. So add PageSafe to the top of the page, and you will need to add the PageSafe stack to every page that you wanna password protect. And really that's all you have to do. Um, it will work out of the box. You don't need to do anything, anything special, especially if you like the default styling. But obviously you wanna change a few things. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the settings. By default, the passcode type is gonna be a four digit pin. 
You can also choose a password, and that is where you can actually use um, any sort of characters. The four digit pin accepts only numbers. The page safe ID is what you're gonna use if you wanna tie multiple pages together. And we'll look at that in a little bit. The next setting is the expire setting, and that's how long the um, login will last before the user has to log in again, okay? So the default is gonna be one day, but you can actually do fractions of a day if you wanted that. Now the next settings have to do with the overall page. The page title is when PageSafe loads the lock screen, uh, what is the title gonna be for the browser? Then the background is gonna be the background setting for the entire lock screen page. We have a lot of settings here. You can have colors, some gradients, um, and also images, tiled images as well as cover images. Now the next settings section has to do with the actual login form. So basically you can choose the icon. The default is gonna be that cool keyhole that gets you the animation. So with that when the page unlocks, the keyhole will rotate and it'll animate in green. It looks really beautiful. We put a lot of work into that. The next will be the padlock. And with the padlock, you actually have three different padlock styles to choose from. You have simple, the default style, and then a detailed padlock. And what's cool is you can actually customize the colors of your padlock. And finally, you can choose your own custom icon. So this is if you wanna you know, add your own company logo and drag and drop an image directly into that uh, image drop zone. Now the next options have to do with the background of our form. By default, they're actually set to have an opacity of zero. But if we change that to let's say an opacity of 30%, we'll see that we have a white background that has an opacity of 30% and it looks gray because we have a black background. You can set the top position, so that's the position relative to the browser window um, that the lock form will be positioned. We have round corners and this affects not only the container of the form, but also the actual input fields for the passcode. And this is so you have a nice uniform look between all of your elements on the password page. Now, if you don't like having this as a container, you can actually do full width container. And what that will do is that will stretch that across the entire width of the browser so that you kind of have a nice band look and it stretches across the entire width. Now, the next options have to do with the actual input fields for the password you'll see that we have placeholder, success, and error. And that, when you're using a four digit pin, all of that text is actually below the pin code fields. And when you're using a password, it's actually in line inside of the password field. So the placeholder is the default text that will be there on page load. Success is the text that will be shown once the correct password has been entered. And then the error text will be shown, obviously, when the incorrect password has been inputted. And then the color settings that we have here, you know, affect the actual color values for the input field itself, as well as the placeholder text. Now, the very last settings group here is for the footer. And this allows you to add a small logo and a short notice at the very bottom of the lock screen. These will always be placed at the very bottom of the browser window. And the logo will be resized so that you can have a maximum of uh, 48 pixels. It is for a very small logo. And while the text, you can enter in as much text as you want, I recommend that you keep it short. And by default, this uh, color of the text is going to be white. However, you know, feel free to actually use um, the text controls and the color controls uh, within the style text view here to customize that text a little bit. Now here's a quick tip. When you're finished editing your page safe stack and you have it the way that you like it, since it's going to be at the top of your stacks page, it's gonna be annoying having to scroll down by it every single time. So what I recommend is after you're done editing it, select the stack and then hide it via the stacks hide button. This way it just collapses that stack and you really don't need to see it all the time. Now adding a logout button to your web page is gonna be really simple. With the PageSafe logout stack, you'll notice that there's actually zero settings inside this stack. 
All it requires is, is that you add any button that you'd like inside the stack. And that button will be used as a logout. Now, if you can also use add a text link as well. So any button or link that is added to the logout stack will log the user out when it's clicked. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can use PageSafe to unlock multiple pages with the same login. So as we see in this demo, if I go ahead and try to go to page one, we'll see that that page is locked. And if I try to go to page two, that page is also locked. And the same thing with page three. However, if I go ahead and enter the correct login information, we'll now see that I can go to page two and it didn't require my login and I can also go to page one and it does not require my login. So I can seamlessly go between these pages without having to log in again. Now, obviously if I log out, it logs me out of every single page. And if I try to visit any of these web pages again, it's not gonna allow me to because those pages are locked. So if we go back to our demo file, we'll see that this is really simple to configure. It's all tied to the same page safe ID. So if we look, we're on multi-lock page one, I set the page safe ID to be multi-lock. And if I go to page two, we'll see that the page safe ID is also set to be multi-lock. So again, every page safe instance throughout your entire site that is tied to the same page safe ID is going to be linked to the same login. So if I wanted any of these pages to have separate logins, I only need to make sure that the page safe ID is different on each page. Now to help make tying page safe stacks between different pages together, we actually provide a global template for page safe that can be added to all your pages. So this way, if you add the page safe global template to all your pages, when you change the settings on one page, it will change it for all of the pages. This way you can make sure that the lock pages have a uniform look, they have the same ID, the same password, and everything. This makes things a lot simpler. So there we have it everybody, that is PageSafe. As you see, it's really simple to implement, but very, very powerful. I hope that you use it, I hope that you love it, I hope that your users love it, because I didn't even show you how cool and how fluid it works on an iPhone. It's just really, really solid. I'm very excited about this stack. I, I hope that it makes your life easier. And uh, without further ado, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy PageSafe. Bye everybody.